Hey there, and welcome to Codecademy. My name is Galena, and I'm a developer from New York. Today, we'll be covering the Bolt Network Freeform project, part of the Learn Ruby on Rails course. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at some of the concepts we'll be working with today. To complete this project, you'll need to be familiar with generating a controller, adding methods or actions to a controller, and creating a route that maps a URL to the controller action. Now, let's pull up our project and get started. Bolt Network. Bolt Network wants to create a Rails app with a home page and an about page. Here's what it looks like. Let's take a look at our application in the browser. And here it is. And using the request response cycle as a guide, there are eight changes to be made. To preview our app at any point in the terminal, type Rails as P 4001. And in the browser, we'll visit localhost 4001. Rails S is the command we're going to use to start our Rails server. Dash P is the port, and in this case, our specified port is 4001. Great, now let's jump right into step one. First, we want to create a new Rails app named Bolt Network. So let's navigate inside of our terminal and use the Rails new command to generate our new application. Let's hit enter. And once those files are done creating, we can check off step one and move on to step two. Perfect. After we create the new app, switch to its folder. In the terminal, type cd bolt-network. So we're going to use the cd or change directory command to switch into bolt network. Let's hit enter and we're ready for step three. Install the gems in the gem file. To do that, in our terminal, we're going to use the bundle install command. Hit enter, and we see bundle complete, so we've successfully installed the gems. Let's check off step three and move on to step four. In the root directory of the project, we've provided the base HTML and CSS for this project. Look at the bottom of your file navigator to locate them. So let's navigate to our folder icon here in the top left corner of our code editor and locate boltnetwork.css and home.html. In your Rails project, create app views pages home.html.erb. Let's do that. So let's navigate inside of our Bolt Network folder and create the pages folder inside of views. So we entered app views, and now we're going to use these three dots to create a new folder called pages. And in that folder, we're going to create a new file called home.html.erb. Now let's hit enter. Take a look back at our instructions. Then copy and paste the contents of the root home.html into your newly created file. So let's find our home.html file at the bottom. Let's select all of the content, copy and paste into our newly generated file. Now let's hit save. Perfect. Next, we want to create the pages.css.scss file inside of style sheets and copy and paste the contents of the root bolt-network.css into that new file. So let's copy the contents of this file and then generate our new file inside of app assets style sheets. So I'm going to use the three dots once again to generate a new file called pages.css.scss. Hit enter and paste our contents. Now let's hit save. And with that, we've completed step number four. Let's give that just a minute. Great. Now let's move on to step number five. Generate a controller named Pages. In the Pages controller, make an action named Home for the home page and an About for the About page. So let's navigate to our terminal and use the Rails Generate Controller command to generate Pages. So now because we've generated a pages.css.scss file earlier, 
it shows up as a conflict. So that's okay. We can just answer no for if we want to overwrite that file. And if we scroll up, we can see all of the other files that were created with our Rails generate command. So we've created a pages controller.rb, which is what we will be using now. And we've also created the views folder, which we've also utilized in the previous step. So next we want to create an action named home for the home page and about for the about page. So let's navigate to our controllers folder inside of app and open pages controller.rb. So I'm going to just extend this. And now inside of our class, we're going to create an action named home. To do that, we'll use def home and then an end followed by a, another method called about. Perfect. Now let's hit save, check off step five, and let's move on to step six. Now in the routes file, config routes.rb, first set the home action as the root route. So let's navigate to our config folder. And inside of routes.rb, we're going to set the home action as the root route. To do that, we'll use the root keyword followed by quotes, inside of which we will have the name of the controller that the action is in, which is pages, and the name of the action. Great. And next, let's create a new route to map the URL about to the about action. On the next line, let's use the get keyword, then about URL to the about action in the pages controller. Now let's hit save and check off step six and we're on to step seven. Start a Rails server to preview the app in the browser. So, so far we've just had the already made application in the browser. So now we'll be able to view our application we've been working on. So let's navigate back to the terminal and let's use the Rails S-P4001 command and start the Rails server. Now let's visit localhost 4001 and view our app in the browser. Perfect, so here is our application. So it looks slightly different than the application we saw previously. But that's okay because we still have some work left to do. So let's check off step seven and let's move on to step eight. In the app views pages directory, create a new view called about.html.erb. So I'm going to resize this a bit and then navigate to views pages and create a new view called about.html. .html.erb. Then I want to copy the HTML from here. Let's take that and paste it inside our newly generated file. So inside of about.html.erb, I am pasting the code I just copied. Now let's hit save and check off step eight. Now on to step nine, set up the layout file. That will be application.html.erb inside of layouts. The layout file lets you build a base view that contains all the common elements of your site, such as CSS files, the header, and the footer. The yield defines the portion of the layout that child templates like home.html.erb and about.html.erb can fill in. So let's navigate to our application.html.erb file inside of layouts and locate the head element. And then below the title, we want to add the CSS files for Bootstrap and the web font. So in our head element below the title, so that would be right here on line five, I'm going to paste in this code. Then in the browser, click the reload icon to refresh the page and preview your updated app. So let's hit save and then click this icon, refresh our page and preview our application. So our application already looks different and actually identical to the example project we've seen in the very beginning. Congratulations, you've completed another Ruby on Rails application. Now, before we move on, let's shortly summarize what we've built and how we achieved it. 
Let's take a look back at our request response cycle. So the request response cycle traces how a user's request flows through the application. Understanding it is a very helpful way to figure out which files to edit and how they are useful. So today we've worked with the Rails router, the controller, and the view. When the user will visit our application in the browser, they will hit that home action that we created in the routes.rb file, which was pages home. That specified the controller along with the specific action to handle that request. Our action home then received that request and passed it on to the view. Now the view that it passed it on to was home.html.erb. The view rendered the page as HTML, which was then sent back to the browser to show to the user. And we've also created a second route today, which was for the about action in our pages controller. We've also generated a view for that action, which was about.html.erb. So let's go back to our application and let's test out that URL. Let's do slash about, and here is our about page. Successfully created a static Ruby on Rails application with just a few steps. I hope this walkthrough was helpful. I'll see you next time and happy coding.